Welcome back to episode two of Filling in the Gaps Rerolled. I'm one of your hosts, Sam, and my other hosts are... Hi, I'm your one of your other hosts, Malcolm. And I'm David. So, how is everyone uh, doing today? How are the campaigns going? Is everyone doing anything fun or exciting? Uh, so, my, my uh, DM decided to put a... Uh, metal golem against us or something of the sort which none of us have ever fought before and we thought we were like high and mighty because we're like level nine characters and my character is known for a very specific move that most characters are known for once they learn it which is fireball (laughs) fireball heals this creature and that was a mistake and now we're all very scared and that is where he left us and he was like well tomorrow you'll figure out how that goes uh tomorrow being sunday for me but yeah this is uh Nice. Suspense. Nice. Yeah, I know. I killed my first player in a one shot. It was with an ally, of course, is how it would go. So that was fun and exciting. He was like, oh, I guess I will no longer play this character. Gotta have like a whole army of backups. Yeah, it was just a one shot to get them familiar with like this guild they're gonna join. And we had the someone cancel last join. minute. Yeah, the rest of them. <laughs> Luckily, it was just a, a one shot, so it wasn't his uh, real player. Very nice. Uh, the Pokemon game I'm running, I threw some zombie venonats at my players, which was fun. Ooh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. It was based on the uh, the spore. There's like a fungus in real life that can kind of override the brains of um, bugs, mostly. I, don't, I think they can probably do more, but. They're known mostly for bugs, and so they just keep. That's the, pretty cool. Keep them going. Yes, cordyceps. Nice. So, with cordyceps, do uh, what's their attack like? What, what do they do? Well, they they just take over the host and kind of use it to go around and kind of make more. They basically drive oh. whatever they've infected. So i I got a question here. Would you guys like to roll? Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, who's doing which? That's a good question. I all I want to go scenarios this time. I always feel like I go themes. Okay. I got an eleven. Um. So. All right. So for our listeners out there, uh, what Malcolm and David are rolling for is our themes and scenarios for today's episode. Malcolm with an eleven for the scenario. It has disappeared. <laughs> uh, looks like it's a centuries festival with evil bards cursing towns by Lagravi. Lagravi? Isn't it Adam? We're, Adam from Roaring Trainers? Isn't that him? That that I I've never actually put that together, but that would make a lot of sense. And I'm sorry, Adam. <laughs> that is you. <laughs> um, and I rolled a two. A two a for sewers by. Ren. Ren has always given us some great suggestions here on filling in the gaps. Okie doke. So, sewers and the Centuries Festival full of evil bards cursing town. That's, that is just so specific, but not. It's so fascinating <laughs> to me. So, I think at first my thought is, like, we definitely have to use the Bard of Nightmares made by the bad DM. I guess. have not heard of this, so w- would you care to explain more about this? Oh, it's basically a bard that strings together uh, nightmares. It's on the DMG's website, or uh, the guild is it GM Masters website for a buck you can go by. But it's pretty cool. You can cast, like, very... It's like, a you know, an evil bard, basically. Okay. So just... Uh, but that's a bard. 
gone like wild. We need evil bards cursing a town. So are we going to have bards of the, like, is it going to be followers of the bards of Nightmare? Maybe. Uh, if they're, if this is one specific bard or is this going to be like a thing? Sorry, like, College of Nightmare is what it. Yeah, like maybe, maybe it's not even that they're like directly following him. Maybe they're just trying to figure out how he does what he does. It's kind of like uh like a college where they're trying to figure out and learn how things work of this bard of nightmares. So something to add to that, we have the, it calls out the centuries festival, quick Google mm-hmm. search. The, the only thing I found is uh, the festival of the century, which is a knowledge festival. Um, and it's a mixture of like knowledge, art and culture that happens yearly. So it makes sense that art music kind of falls under that. And a lot of what bards do, I think this is very tied into that. So this could be like competing bards or like a disgraced bard that left wherever this thing is happening that's coming back to kind of curse it. Or So what if we had it be like a warped version of the, uh, of the like music and art and stuff? Like you had like uh, easels coming to life and like, you know, painting peoples, you know, like (laughs) like, that kind of thing where it's like revenge of the like stuff that bards typically are like, this is what I'm about. It's like, well, now that's gone terribly wrong. All the, all the women have turned to sirens and all the men have done and become like minotaurs. Like what, like, you know, like what if it's just like a complete reversal of everything bards stand for? And that is the curse that is happening. And so, like, it's a celebration of bards normally, but now it's being corrupted or, like, uh, Cursed. ruined. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, that's very interesting. Well, come on, guys. Play in the space. Jump in. <laughs> um, <laughs> so who's having the festival? That's a good question. And why is your party there? Well, typically... From what I know of, like, art and culture festivals, it's just, like, a thing you could have it be... It's a perfect chance to throw in some lore for your for your world. Mm. If you're like, man, my players never care about my lore, it's like, well, tie, well secret is tied to the stuff that they actually want to do. If they want to fight stuff, tie lore to that, and they'll go, oh, that's important. <laughs> um, but, yeah, if you have it be where it's like, oh, this is a great festival of, like, uh, of the great singer Kanye, like, you know, like you just, <laughs> it's the great bard of Kanye. And it's like, Oh yeah, he came to town once and we celebrate that this happened this day. Um, and this and that. And it's like, okay, that's why they're throwing a festival. It doesn't have to, I don't think it needs to be super specific, but I think it could be like something where the town is celebrating that a bar did something. Oh, that gives me an idea, actually. What if it's like a thing where the reason the bard's cursing the town is because either they've forgotten him or because, or her, or because uh, they, like, someone stole their credit. So it's like, oh, kind of a, like, I wrote all the songs and never nobody ever knew it was actually me, and now I've learned how to harness magic powers. So revenge, like, <laughs> until you renounce the name of the real star, or of the person who's the quote-unquote real star. So you're saying we have some lich bards coming at them. Not even, I not lich necessarily bards. lich bards, because <laughs> that's going to be really powerful. But you could just have it be like an angry bard, like a bard that was scorned. And it's like, oh, like you don't know that I wrote all these songs. You didn't know that I was the person behind all this. You keep giving all, this guy all the attention. Like a certain movie, which I won't ruin. Uh, <laughs> okay, I was thinking of the same movie. Yep. Which okay. is why yeah. the Lich Bards came to mind. <laughs> that, that makes sense, especially considering the uh, aesthetic of said movie. But um, yeah, with that, I, I would do that where it's kind of like an angrier version of that. Of like, you stole my life and that's not fair. I should be the one who's famous. I should be the one who the town is like, oh, the great the great town of me it shouldn't be about this and you can that's another thing you can name the town after the person or the festival after the person you could have it be that they just like you could have them be related you could have them not be related you could have them be rivals like there's a lot to play with there with the dynamics of how you want to make this character interaction go yeah i think that's uh very smart to do um just uh so we're having this festival 
but uh, what kind of lore is behind it? What could we give to DMs who are just trying to make this real quick for their like one shot or or something like that? Like it's the it's the the centuries festival, right? So that that just means something happens every hundred years. So what what's the festival for? Is it the the death of a great fighter, or if it's if it's this musical celebration? then it could be just a giant musical uh, competition for your party to, to get into. Like, it's it's in honor of that one person, Kanye, who has died 100 years ago. <laughs> and now, um, as, your, as your players are coerced into this competition, they are now faced with the, uh, the idea of like, oh shit, a ghost just came, and he's telling me that Kanye didn't write these songs. It was really... I don't know someone else. Yeah, <laughs> we don't we don't know a ton of celebrities, uh, but the uh, I feel like yeah, you could have it be that it's this, and then of course if you put the party in it, they're more likely to be like, oh, now we have to solve it because we're involved and they're part of the curse. Like whatever's happening now is happening to them as well, which is important. Uh, I feel like doing like yeah, a, a musical like event or a musical festival where it's like oh you know try your hand at this or like doing that you you could have it be that it's them like and maybe they start to feel the effects of whatever the curse is like that's a good question what should the curse even be like it says evil bards cursing towns but and also it says towns so should this be like a thing happening from place to place that slowly like each it could be hitting like all of the places that celebrate whoever this b- legendary bard is. So mm-hmm. they, they might have a town named after them, and that's like the big one. But smaller outlying towns have also had whatever this is roll through. And I really liked the idea you had earlier of just basically inverting the arts, and that's what the curse does. It's like because okay. because you didn't appreciate it correctly, and you kind of ignored what I was about, then you don't really get to enjoy your culture and art the way you normally would sounds like a very like like uh one of those oh gosh i can't think of the word but like one of those people who's like it's all about the music man like it's all about (laughs) just me and my guitar like none of that corporate stuff and i feel like that would be with this villain if it is a villain even because you could have it be arguable that's like one of those people who's just like nah this town's getting what it deserves maybe it's full of bad people Mm mm-hmm like we, I know one of my friends is playing uh, Witcher right now, and he's been talking about how he's like I having trouble getting into it because everyone I meet is a bad person, and I was like, yeah, that happens for like the beginning part of the game, and he's like, I don't know how to get more deeply involved or like if I should care about them then. So maybe don't do that to your town. Now that I think about it, but that's <laughs> the thing where it's like presenting the argument that sometimes you know like you can see how someone then could walk away from like there's an attack and it's like well you guys are kind of mean so i don't want to i don't want to help you (laughs) i think if this this bard that's are we going with they passed away i I mean we could always have have the the bards that are cursing it could be a cult it could be even followers of a false hydra you know we could even have it that if you want to get if you want to provide the final boss for here at this um, Centuries Festival, um, say you have a party member, it's like, put it in someone's hometown. And they go in and they go, the, their whole, the whole time they're talking about how I'm going to visit my parents and blah, blah, blah. And when they get there, they all of a sudden forget their parents ever existed. And so the party's like, oh, we're your parents. And he's like, who? So it could, you could pull in a false hydra, and whenever they're not singing, they're eating someone, and after they're done eating them, basically that person is forgotten. So if you have these these bards going around cursing towns, basically providing a next spot for this hydra to eat at, or like a you know a meal, like this this town's easy enough to take over and and sink in. We could do it that way as well. That so wait, really hydras good. affect memories? I, False I hydras aware. do. It, oh. it came up, it's not in, a, in the official DM or a monster manual or any book, but it's, at least I thought it was popular enough where uh, uh, a popular homebrew monster that came about. But basically what it does is it's, it, there's a constant song that 
charms this town that normally is its lair. And the people live their lives normally, except whenever it's silent out, the Hydra is eating. And after they're done eating someone, um, they become forgotten. But okay. then, then the song continues, and everyone's going about their life like no one died. Like, oh, there's this hole in the ground, and there's blood next to it, and Jim's shirt is on the ground. Say, D- but don't worry about it. <laughs> and everyone in the town is like, this is normal. Jim? Yeah, yeah, right. No one. And the party's like, that's, we talked to Jim yesterday. That's what are you really talking crazy. about? That would be. That would be. We keep making very creepy campaigns <laughs> for the record, but that would be interesting. Um, yeah. So instead of the curse being that, like this, this art and culture is being turned on its head, it's taking away the art and culture. So usually this is something that they would celebrate. So now in in their revenge, they're just removing the memory of your yes. favorite song. Or, yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay. And that could also because it's the tar- the the town is only charmed while this hydra is eating or while it's singing. When it takes those moments to eat, you would be able to have some really neat interactions where people are actually kind of afraid of what's going on and then it starts singing again and they're not. So you could bring in this like eat the you'd have this evil bard bring in this thing to get his revenge or if we're keeping that, if not, cool. But we could have that be his like method is that he found this thing and then he's like, Oh good. I can get revenge on that guy and it's just like I'm I can ruin him now. Heck, you can even have it be then you can even have it be that it's not a thing of like a just angle. It could just be a guy who's like, Hey, I should have been I should have been more popular than I was and Dag Nabbit, you're you're popular and I don't like that and you could just be taking out really popular bards. <laughs> so we have an evil hipster bard. Yes. <laughs> What so, yeah, would say it's a, a cold play? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I d- I'm into it though. Yeah, I'm I'm into the concept of like this bard band that thinks it could have been bigger if it weren't for these other more successful bard bands. So its solution is to take out those bard bands using either. And if you guys don't want to use homebrew uh, creatures, you could always you know go with uh, just memory magic and just have them erased and or like murdered in the night that way, or taken kidnapped in the night if you want to go more child friendly. Uh, but. Uh, uh, yeah, the uh, I feel like you could have those be like things where they disappear. The false hydra, which I have looked up, it says it is for evil DMs. So I don't know how bad you guys want to use it, but I think it's really cool. And I think that if you had it like um, if you had to eat up, eat the other things, and it's just like oh, you could even have the that would be pretty funny actually in a dark way if you have the. Uh, party come in and they're like great we need we needed a band and it's like oh yeah and it's like they keep forgetting that they had a band the night before so it's like oh yeah we need a band to to do the song for tonight and it's like oh yeah oh tonight we need a band (laughs) and it's like yeah your bands keep disappearing (laughs) but it's like a thing that can unravel over time yeah i think that's this perfect especially if you're a dm with a party who isn't jumping into role playing right away and that's what you're looking for i think these this is a great opportunity to provide them with um the social interactions to jump into um role playing yeah i think that this is a great chance to have um because then also you get to see what the party wants because that's the fun part about festivals is that you always get to see what everybody wants to do there's always so i think and this should be important this is important. I think you should have a not a few hours where things are normal enough. Mm-hmm. Not in game yes. hours, not at like not real life hours. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, but have it be that there's enough time that goes by that the characters are like, "Hey, I got to paint this. Hey, I want to go join the battle of the bands. Hey, I want to do this." And it's like, "Oh, now a guy's approaching us saying they need a band for tonight to perform." And that's when they're like, "Wait, Wait, what happened to... I thought someone else had said who was going there that this person was performing that. And they're like, who? I've never heard of the of the shellfish bards. Like, what? <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, I, I got to figure that out. It sounds like the Hydra would affect everyone in the town. Maybe the curse is that it just affects who's in the town when it starts. So that's kind of going on before the party gets there. That way they can have those moments where they're actually remembering um, these details. 
Otherwise, it well, would I be was like, saying that it was going to be like a recommendation from out of town of like, oh, you got to go here. This person's performing. Mm-hmm. They're really huge. You'll get inspired by them. So you can get like a thing where like, <laughs> oh, we're going to get free inspiration if we watch this band. Like, <laughs> but yeah. And then I'm sorry, you were saying something. Uh, no, I was just saying Sam. we should name the the cursed bards that are going around doing this, bringing people into Ooh. this town. And I think we should also just name this festival that way. Um, if people don't want to, they can just grab the name we, we say here. Okay. Uh, I'm not good at naming things. <laughs> I, I'm not. I think the fun of this would come in where it's like you get to do your own D and D versions of your favorite bands. Mm-hmm. So you get to like have like, I don't know. I keep thinking of the Beatles. So if I didn't say the Beatles, I got to just say the Beatles. And then like, but you could have like plays on words for some of the bands there of things of like an entirely deaf group of cat folk, well, deaf leopard. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. See, that's the stuff. <laughs> yeah. The tabaxis or <laughs> deaf leopard. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there's something you can do with mycanoids. Uh, there's, there's a lot out there that I know that people could, turn their bands from one thing into another and be like, hey, that's that's the clever stuff. Um, but yeah. And you could have that be that those are the band. And then that way also, if your party is not super engaged, you have it be that they can go, oh, I know who those people are and then pull like them in a little bit more because it's like, I like Def Leppard. Hang on a minute. I want to help <laughs> them. I don't want them to get eaten by a thing or disappear. Yes, puns will be your friend in this um, <laughs> encounter for sure. I mean, in most episodes, we're going to recommend puns, but still. <laughs> <laughs> but the actual festival title, I feel like that's up to the person. Um I mean, it depends on what you want your bard to, who's celebrated or thing to, who's celebrated could be about. Because if you wanted to just rip off stuff, which no one's secret to D&D is no one cares if you rip off stuff as long as you, you know, make it entertaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could do like, oh, sword, of so- uh, sword and song and like different things like that. You could have it be whatever you want to call it and go from there. But I don't know. That's, that is tricky for a name for it. Yeah, or at least, uh, what is it? What does this festival look for? Look for you guys, like look like for you guys. I, David, you want to take this one? Sure. Um, I think we had an idea that it would be like a recommendation from somebody. Like, mm-hmm. hey, there's a really great musical festival that's going on here. Um, your party could have a bard, and they could get a like a direct invitation to come and participate, and maybe we bring in some of the elements of the Battle of the Bands and have it as this competition. So you could join as one of the bands that are going to be in the battle. And if you only have one musically talented person, everyone else could come up with the ways that they're going to contribute. So you could have your sorcerer be in there with your pyrotechnics. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Ooh. And then if you want to connect it to the like sense of the thing, you just have like... You have them do the Battle of the Bands. You do like a miniature version of it. So you don't have like a full gauntlet, but you have like four or five people they go up against. And when they see like this other band's really good and taking people out and then it's like they don't get to go up against them. And it's like we can't find them. They're gone. And the, or people just go, like, oh, you won. And it's like, but what about that other band? They're like, who? Who, who, who was that supposed to be? And then you have to have them. I feel like you can make it a contested role What's- for the actual party. But I don't feel like it's fair to Our lovely just completely audio wipe it. Just brought up that this would be an ex- excellent point to have a skill challenge that your mm. party can run through for each of these competitions. Yeah. Do you want to break down what a skill challenge is for other people? Because I'm bad at explaining a lot of D and D things. Basically, it's a series of um, rolls in a row where your party kind of goes in initiative order, and you can roll for that or decide it. Um, where everyone is trying to meet a certain number. Um, You need a certain number of passes to be successful or failures and you're unsuccessful. Yeah. Sounds like that'd be good. Uh, Sam, what are you thinking for uh, this? How would you tie it together or like, you know? Yeah. I think going along the lines of keeping the quest giver, someone the party trusts is a good idea. Um, Especially if this is like a downtime activity where you've just finished your your long 
arc of what what happened whatever sorry one second long arc of your adventure this is a perfect time to just throw a curveball at your party be like oh we're about to have a great time at a in a nice town and if you don't have a bard in your um party you can definitely make it like uh a band needs security or something like that and Mm. slowly weave the threads of of the singing and this hydra um taking control of the town um or if if your party is following this these bards throughout like they enter a town and it's cursed and the the fields dry up and there's no more rain ever since these this band came and sang a song um we can't uh we can't get rain in i think that's just definitely ways you can uh weave it in and then uh they have to go to this town to protect the the festival um my mind naturally goes to fey so if if it's a festival for like a fey tree um mm. where these bards are now you know are tackling them to uh deplete it of its magic or trying to take its magic or even just giving the their boss if we're still going with the, the hydra as their boss even giving it more magic supply so we can level up and eventually become your climax battle uh that is just kind of where my mind goes Mm-hmm. Mm. To jump okay. on that a little so, bit, I like the idea of the Fey, and that would kind of open up um, where you could have a prize that would entice people to actually come. So if you have this really powerful Fey saying, you're going to entertain me with your music in a competition, and I'll give you a wish or something along those lines, something that they'd be able to dole out with however much power they have. Oh, that would be perfect. Or even if, if uh, another way you can put that in your game is if you do have a player death and they're like look i really just want to play this one character how do you bring it back to life without being like all right uh you're back to life yeah you can make them earn it uh, yeah or if you just killed like a really important npc and this could be how they bring them back so for okay so question then because i want to make sure i have it straight as well um would the fey be the bard or would the bard be working for the fey neither the bard would be kind of tied to local music and culture the fey would just be running the competition because they want to be okay i so i see and so it just seems ill-advised and a thing to go up against the fey (laughs) under any conditions so i it's just odd to me that's all but i guess also the thing would be like you could have it be that it's just like the prize giver or like whatever like i i don't know that's that's kind of a interesting spot but it, i don't know about for how i would do that but hmm. so but yeah okay so we have def leopard what other kinds of encounters would our groups kind of come up against either in the battle of the bands itself or kind of dealing in the background I feel like Def Leppard's so good that it has to be the band that disappears right before everything like goes crazy. Or it's like, the name it's of the band the... of the bad bards. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Because, I mean, a leopard that can't hear would actually be really terrible at music. That would be that would be sad. <laughs> or what if their songs make people go deaf? That's their curse. Oh. They deafen all of these... Um, all of these different bands and bards where now they can't hear the spoken word uh, because most bards are for spoken word or singing or some sort of silver tongue action. Now that they can't hear it, it just sounds wrong. Um, If you do have a bard in your group. Because they think they're this amazing band. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like now you can have their charisma store drop. Or now their persuasion checks that they had advantage on now has disadvantage. <laughs> you you could have their instruments cast silence on their own, and that's their curse. Is that they're like any time? It's that's the oh. deafening effect of Def Leppard. Is that they're <laughs> like they're like oh yeah we're gonna play you a song and it's like you can never hear. They might be really good musicians, but they could be like the person who's angered like a fay or angered a witch or angered whatever and it's like you're cursed now this is this is your curse no one will ever hear you and you're like a great band and no one will ever know how great you are um we have been sleeping on the theme though which is sewers um 
We have not involved the sewers at all. <laughs> Whoever this bad group is, they have to be based in the sewers. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. So that just means rat, right? <laughs> well, what? The band rats, right? <laughs> oh. I only learned about them from commercials. Uh, oh. But, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the, yeah, you could have that be if you don't want, De- if you want Def Leppard to stay good. If you love Def Leppard in your heart. Um, they can be the band that goes missing because Rat is the true villain and they are from the sewers and they are there to, you know, just just ruin your life. Um, that or if we're going to continue with the, the false Hydra, which we don't have to, but it could just be hiding in the sewers yeah. and you can have a whole town inside the sewers that people are forgetting about. Or you can actually have the festival inside of the sewers. And it's like we have oh, like a hidden thing. Yeah. Or it's like. A uh, festival of a hundred years with indoor plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> Our life has been so well, much changed. We don't have to go dig a new outhouse every night. Well, that's what's interesting is that 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 gave me a new idea <laughs> with with the concept of like having in there being an underground area. Uh, you could have it be that it's like these guys are under there, the false hydras under there, whoever. The villains are underground, and they're like. They are ensuring that they can take whatever and then just go down and be underground with whatever it is. And you can have these sewer encounters and make it kind of like a maze-esque situation because no one knows how to navigate a sewer. Mm-hmm. That's that's weird. Um, right. There's also... So you could I have think, it be that they're... Mm-hmm. Um, I, there's also a magical item, I think, pipe of the sewers. Uh, mm. Pipes of the sewers, something like that. And that's just a great instrument that you can have in there and give to your players at some point too if they complete this quest. Yeah, I'm, there's there's a lot that you can do there with uh, with the sewers. Okay, so sewers now are getting involved. You could have it be that. Oh, okay. So let's not. We don't. I love the false hydra, and I think that is good for a terrifying campaign if you want to horrify your players. We can all <laughs> agree on that. Yes. But with kidnapping in this case and putting them in the sewers, hello to your Super Mario game where you just get to go down in the sewers and go rescue the band while this festival is going on, while the bards are cursing them to like have stuff happen at the fe- so you have like three fronts so there's different <laughs> levels to this insanity now where it's like oh boy what does the party want to tackle first because sure you fixed the festival great you stopped all the monsters from attacking mm-hmm. we don't have a band <laughs> well they weren't killed they were kidnapped and since people won't forget them in that in this version of it you could even have it be that it's like okay where did our band go? And it's like, I don't know that right as we figured out they were missing art started to attack us and like music whole harp started to beat us up. And we were all very oh, afraid. And I it's like, love that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, then you have to go after you defeat that part. It, it separates it out to sections. So then it's like, okay, now we go into the sewer. Now we're fighting, like trying to find where rats or whatever band we want it to be. Oh, they got whatever band it has to be has to play like grunge music. Mm. It's grunge for sewers. Yeah. It's just perfect. <laughs> um, um, but you have it that you then find these people who are down there who have kidnapped these other bards, who of course are going to be very upset because they are celebrities. Dak Nabbit, they don't deserve to be in the sewers. <laughs> so you have it with them being in danger or in different traps and stuff that you can choose to set up however and then you could do it that way i love the idea oh. of having all of these um puns for the band names but i think one should definitely just be kanye west yeah oh, oh of i think i think kanye has to be the person who like started the festival <laughs> but for himself and then other people were just like hey i want to be part of this festival and he's like yeah sure yeah it's the Kanye West <laughs> beast. <laughs> but, you know, I or think Kanye that's... East, so it's not copyright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kanye Northwest. There you go. <laughs> um, I, I think it. that's great. I love the idea of, of one of the curses being the instruments are coming to alive. So your your bard is, is playing his lute and all of a sudden the, the strings grab his hand. And now he has to make a strength or dexterity check to get out of it. Or, like, they grab his hand and he can't, like, cast any spells. Mmm. 
I didn't even think about that. I think that's a great idea. That was that was a choice uh, thought right there. And then you can bring that in. And so when they get down to like the different level, if you have a whole different group of of bards, this this bard controls like uh, like if it's using the pipe of the sewers, I think he like controls rats and stuff like that. So now you have to go fight the rats and get through, and you have Yo. different things underneath there and. We've been sleeping on the ultimate villain, Pied Piper. It's perfect. <laughs> that really is. <laughs> He's, he would con- be able to control the rats and stuff of the sewers, different animals and different things. Yeah, and he's, like, known for just straight-up causing chaos. It's, it's perfect. You just have a Pied Piper-esque villain, and you have him be able to do the stuff that you're saying. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead and continue. But I was just like, that sounds like this guy. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's just... I love that. Um, so we have Death Leopard, Pied Piper, uh, all together. <laughs> they've through, they've made a band. through band names to try and come up with some other ones. <laughs> It's it's hard. So far, I, I will admit. I have a bunch of goblins called the Poo Fighters. Hmm. We've got Bows oh, and there Roses, you go. which is an elf band. Bows and Roses, I love. That is good. We've got the Motley Brew, which is a group of witches. You got to have Imagine Dragons be something. <laughs> oh, Dragonborn. <laughs> Kobolds. It's got Kobolds. Co- to be Kobolds. Oh, Kobolds are <laughs> even better. Than, oh. <laughs> and they think they're dragons. Like, that'd be great. <laughs> oh, I love that. That or um, you have it be, oh gosh, was Sahuagin? Just a bunch of Sahuagin imagining dragons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Too bad we said uh, the Kuatoa last time because if they imagine yeah, dragons. That's, that's who I meant. Yes. <laughs> Kuatoa. There we go. Sahuagin are the mermaid people, yeah, fish people. Shark guys. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's but, uh, great. <laughs> I like this. Okay, so. All right, we've we've turned a few times around in here. There's like three different campaign ideas, so we're giving you guys like a, a platter to pick from. But I think we're gonna talk more about this last one, uh, where because that involves the sewer more, and we want to actually involve our theme with our scenario because that's the show. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, okay. So we have it be that we have this festival, the Kanye Festival. We'll call it for now. You guys can choose whatever celebrity you want. If you don't like Kanye, uh, if you feel that Taylor Swift deserves all the credit that she got when Kanye unfortunately stole uh, her moment in the spotlight for that one time. You could have it be a Taylor Swift festival. Yeah. Um, we are just throwing celebrities out there and they don't even like get to like, you know, promote our podcast. <laughs> wow. Um, but anyway, uh, you could have it be that you can fill them in with whoever, whomever. You can have it be that the uh, festival happens, things go wild. Um, but this Pied Piper S character, or if you want to be really crazy and put Pied Piper in, why not? Um, comes in and goes like hey you have been like you have ruined music and art and how dare you and i will not stand for it and then he goes down into the sewers where he is apparently from in this timeline um and that is where he has kidnapped the bands um that you must rescue and you get to kind of have more of a I still, I'm still really into the idea of a platforming Mario kind of situation in the sewers where it's like, that's where you get all your acrobatics and stuff. <laughs> that's where you do all your like strength checks and different things mm-hmm. is in, in the sewer because up above you're going to be doing all your charisma and all of your like intelligence checks and wisdom checks to figure out what's going on. Now it's time for your strong, non-brainy characters to go like, hey, I get to punch this and then that <laughs> works. I get to do a flip, and now I'm across. Yeah. <laughs> so That's really good. And I think yeah. motivation. I like the idea that this Pied Piper, maybe not because their music isn't good, but they just prefer like the purity of acting or performing. So they're against this Bay because he made it a competition. So I, or music has I like the idea soul. of the... Uh, like you had mentioned earlier, David, the hipster kind of Pied Piper, and it just being like, it's supposed to be about the music. You turn this to a competition. It's all corporate <laughs> yeah. now, yeah. man. I'm not about it. 
<laughs> yeah, that would be so great. It's just, it's just this character who's just like, I will show you that this is what art is supposed to be. There's no competition. There's no, it's just art. You've ruined this art and now art will attack you because that's real art. <laughs> like, yeah, you're experiencing the art. That's what art's for. The, yeah. Oh, the experience. That's, that's gotta, <laughs> That's got to be like his belief is that he's like, you got to experience the art. It's, you can't do it. I'm going to make the art experience you. Like, it's oh, how it's going to oh. happen. <laughs> That's nice. I, I love this. I, I got to admit, um, with these episodes, with this podcast in general, it always starts with me going like, I don't know where we're going to go with this or how this <laughs> is even going to work together. But by the end, it's like, wow, I really do love this. I want to play this now. Mm-hmm. So I think we have a good handle on this. Should we move into the synopsis and uh, recap? I can't. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember. Sure. Uh, what it was called? Sure. <laughs> Is it? Uh, I will take the synopsis. Or wait, who did it last time? Did... I think I did the synopsis. Or no, I did the recap last time. Oh, it is synopsis and recap. Okay. I was like, oh, I couldn't remember the verbiage. Yeah, synopsis, uh, synopsis and recap. Synopsis. We can cut all this part out at the end here. So don't worry. Uh, okay, so oh, okay. that was last time? Yes. Okay, so then who does it this? I'm, I, I can, I'm recap and your synopsis then? Sure, I can do that. that sounds good. So why don't I do that while you gather your uh, synopsis there, Malcolm? Yeah, there's there's a few scenes to pick from, so... Alright, so basically in this episode we talked about... Uh, we have... Uh, our theme is sewers, and our scenario is a centuries festival, basically, where uh, bards are cursing people. Uh, so you can do, run this in multiple ways. You can thread in the false hydras with uh, bard um, underlings helping them find out new places to to eat people and have a new layer and whatnot. You can also have this as a great punny adventure with different bands gone missing, uh, have some different curses, have uh, your instruments become mobile and attacking villagers and whatnot, have your uh, players experience the art and the art experience your players. Um your major threat is you're going to want someone in there to um, be the the bad bards cursing everyone is uh, pretty much. And then, um, yeah, have your sewer adventure have a, be a place where you can have your non-bard players um, become activated and participate in what's going on. Good. Okay, uh, here we go with the synopsis. <clears throat> Your party approaches the microphones yet again. Well, wait a minute. (laughs) There's no microphones in medieval times, Malcolm. (laughs) Let's try that again. Your party approaches the stage and looks out to the crowd of adoring fans that they've gathered throughout the Battle of the Bands. They look look towards the spotlight that shines down from a wizard casting light, because that can work. Um, And... Uh, where their supposed competition is supposed to be. They've seen them take down band after band, yet they're not there. Def Leopard is missing. They turn towards the crowd somewhat confused, and as they look out, they see that the people are beginning to shout, not with excitement, but with fear, as different pieces of art have come to life. Statues, and easels, and harps, and all sorts of different instruments and things that stand, that represent what art stands for, have now come to life and have begun to attack the audience. There is panic amongst the group. What do you do? Very nice. Awesome. Love it. (laughs) Yeah, first go. Not too bad. (laughs) All right. Well, this has been episode two of Filling in the Gaps Rerolled. I am one of your hosts, Sam. I'm one of your hosts, Malcolm. I'm the other one, David. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Filling in the Gaps. Our theme music is Today by Lindby off of the album Drive. If you like it, you can hear more of them at lindby.bandcamp.com or on the Actual Play podcast, Bombard It. If you're looking for us on social media, 
This is David, and you can find me at Daedra18, that is D-A-E-D-R-A-1-8. You can find me at The Ruler of Rhyme. I am at DM Mambo 5 On Twitter, you can also follow the show at FitGDND or on our Discord server. We're always looking for new themes and scenarios to add to our lists. Give us a shout out. The show is edited by our wonderful audio gremlin, Andrew Brown, who you can follow on Twitter at xnubinator912x. We are an Obtuse Audio Studios podcast. You can learn more about Obtuse Audio Studios at obtuseaudio.com. It helps us out incredibly if you're able to give us a five-star review on iTunes or any other podcasting app that you're currently listening to us through. We'd really appreciate it. And one last time, I do really just want to say thank you for listening. We'll see you at the next episode. What's in your thoughts? Oh, what's in your mind? What fills your head and what leaves it behind? It's too much today. It's too much today. Obtuse audio. Obtuse audio.